Horse people, one of the things we all have to deal with when we confine horses or put them in a somewhat of a closed space, like a paddock or even around areas in a pasture, <clears throat> we ought to deal with mud. Um, it is a fact of life. If it rains and there's soil, you're going to get mud. And it's usually in a place where we don't want it. We can develop, they're called high traffic paths, or we can have something like a dry lot where we can actually construct things to mitigate the mud issue. But it's more than just dumping some rock down on top of the, the soil to kind of cover it up. You actually have to do something so that you can mitigate and deal with the water that's going to cause you your mud. So there's a fact sheet that people can get and it will have the, the name and the number at the end of the video, but <clears throat> that shows you how to, to construct a high traffic pad. So you dig down uh, anywhere 9 to 10, maybe 11 inches, remove all that topsoil, get to a place where you have really solid clay base. Then you're going to put down a piece of fabric. You're going to use geotextile fabric. Uh, the one that's generally recommended is more the woven, this, this weave, it feels very much like fabric. Uh, not the plastic weave one. This one tends to hold very well and it actually does a good job of handling the water. So this would be the one we would recommend. You put it down, secure it, and then you start to build your high traffic pad. So you're going to go with a larger rock. Uh, depending on the quarry you might be getting it from, it will be called something different. But you want rock that's going to be about this big. And you're going to put if we're at, at nine inches, I'm going to put probably six inches of this big rock down on top of my fabric. Uh, that's going to give me a, a base so that the, when the water goes through, it'll be there for a little bit and then it will gradually drain away. So we're not having a big rush of water and that makes it really good. Now then there's two options. You can put a second layer of fabric, and there are some people that are recommending that. And the reason for that is if I put fabric over top of this rock, I'm going to maintain my porosity and maintain my empty spaces. Whereas if I put my topping surface on without that, some of it's going to fill in the spaces. And so it becomes a, de a decision that you as the horse owner need to make. And then you can go with something like this. This is more of a dense gray aggregate, uh, and that's actually what it's called. <clears throat> this one maybe has a few too many big stones in it for a lot of us. Uh, but again, it will give you some structure. Uh, it won't compact quite so much so that the water will drain through in a reasonable way. Basically what this high traffic pad is going to do is it's going to take some of the energy out of the water and keep it from running off. Others will use this which is more like a uh, class I sand is what it's typically called or a, a limestone sand. Again this one's got some structure to it so <clears throat> it will pack over time. Um, that's why I, I would maybe look at some of this dense grade with some slightly bigger stone in it, a little, little larger particle size so we don't get the absolute compaction. And that will really work. So we can build them like we have an example here. This one instead of using either the dense grade aggregate or the class I sand, it has got pea, gra pea gravel in it. Uh, it also has a grid. And what the grid does is it just holds all of your top material in place. So this works reasonably well um, if you have some slope to the area that you're doing and you want to kind of hold your rock from moving as the water goes over top of it. This will help with that. It's important though if you do this is you have to maintain this and make sure that these grid squares are always full. Uh, <clears throat> it is an additional expense that some people may not want to to bother with and they would rather just manage their rock and manage their high traffic pad without doing that. But it's really good and, and we have here at the Icelandic Horse Farm a great example of how they've used high traffic pads underneath all of their run-in and shade structures. So even under there we always have good consistent footing 
Um, we're able to mitigate and manage mud. Uh, we can easily clean up uh, manure if we need to. We can clean up hay, and it just gives us a much better surface, more consistent surface for our horses to stand on. Now, one of the issues that I do hear from people is, oh, they're standing on rock. Yes, they are. But you need to think about it. Is it better that they stand on rock, something that looks like this, where it's dry, um, easier on their feet, or they're standing in mud? And I think for most of our horses, it's a lot better if we can get them on some dry ground, some level ground, and it just makes it much better for them and works out much better. So think about getting a high traffic pad put in. It takes a little bit of work. Um, the other thing that, that when you're deciding how big do I need, uh, go a little bigger than what you think is the minimum because once you build it, you won't make it bigger. Uh, and think about what has to go through that gate area, what's going to be in that run-in shed, how much space do I need to have put into this so that I have good drainage and I don't have issues with mud.